Hello, my name is David Lee Campbell. Without knowing it, I played an interesting and important role in 1959 in the desegregation of Tulane University, and I'd like to tell you about it. Really, no one knew this before. I arrived in New Orleans from a segregated college in Texas in 57 on an essential for me law school scholarship to Tulane, which was also segregated. After my first year, I was, to my surprise, ranked first in my class. That first summer, I knew I'd have to go back to Texas or get a good paying job to stay in New Orleans. Luckily, I landed one on offshore oil rig cat code 19. Good money. Shortly after I returned from my second year at Tulane though, Cat Code 19 blew up and killed 12 men, one of which was the gentleman I'd been bunked with and who planned to retire after that last shift. The second summer, I opted for much less money to clerk for the biggest firm in the city. I had my choice as my ranking in class was still number one. That was why I chose the firm of Jones Walker. A week after I started, I was called in to see Mr. Joseph Merrick Jones, the founder and senior managing partner in the firm. He told me I was to put aside any other assignments. They would have me work solely for him on only one large legal research project, that it was to be kept between him and me, and that I was not to tell anyone what I was working on. He would hire an out-of-office secretary to type the manuscript. I didn't know why all of this. For the next three months, I researched and analyzed the historic precedent and current state of the law with regard to segregation in all areas of life, education, housing, employment, the military, and other civil liberties and restraints. When finished, my thesis was typed up by an out-of-office secretary and sent to Mr. Jones who was in the Bahamas at the time. This event was first made public in my 2017 memoir, The Double Life, A Survivor's Guide to Transcend Success and Tragedy. Then I got a call from Mr. Jones. He said he just finished my tome, as he called it, that it was beyond the call of duty, and that he was putting a check in the mail for going beyond the expected. Unfortunately, though, I ran home every day to check the mail to see whether he meant Hundred dollars or a thousand, I didn't know. No check ever arrived. After my third year at Tulane Law, I was one of 12 American scholars to be awarded the British Marshall Scholarship to Oxford University, where in 1963, I finished my degree, Doctor of Philosophy in Private International Law. Shortly after returning to New Orleans and deciding to live there, I chose a very different large firm as associate to begin my career. And then a tragic fire broke out in the Jones home, engulfing both Mr. and Mrs. Jones and everything in the home. My tome was for Mr. Jones's use, apparently not filed at the firm itself. I assumed it too was lost, but I still had my old tissue copy that he let me keep. Mr. Jones served as chairman of the Tulane Board of Administrators throughout this time, including when I wrote the brief for him, which I learned when in England he needed in order to make the decision as chair of the Board of Administrators, whether to voluntarily desegregate Tulane, as litigation was also pending to compel it by judicial order. I have donated my papers, including this desegregation tome, to Tulane, and now after that tragic fire and the death of Mr. Jones, the only other known copy of that foundational legal research is freely available to everyone online at the Tulane Digital Library at digitallibrary.tulane.edu. I'm both proud and humbled, so thank you, Tulane.